All right, so everybody, in this video, we are going to take a look at combining like terms now involving some negatives in our problems. So let's do a quick warm up to refresh ourselves with what we did yesterday. So simplify this expression um, just by combining like terms. So again, we said we can take, like I usually use a lighter color, and we can start breaking up our expression into the individual terms. Right, so anytime you see a plus or a minus sign, put a squiggly line right before that. Right, this is going to help you break up all of your terms. So you can keep the sign straight um, and keep everything organized. Um, and that way you can see we have one, two, three, four, five different terms in this problem. So all we need to do is just start thinking about what types we have. So I see we have X terms in here. So we can highlight all of the X ones in one color, switch to another highlighter color, and I see that we have a Y term. It's only actually one Y term, but we can still highlight it. And then we also have constants, which are just whole numbers. Right, so again, adding in these squiggly lines and doing the highlighting helps make sure that you keep all of your signs straight and know how many terms you have. So pause this video, see if you can do the combining of like terms, and then we'll check our simplified expression. All right, so if you combine your x terms together, that should leave you with a 5x. Combine your, well, there's only one y term, so that's going to be a plus 4y. And then combine your constants will give you a plus 4. So this is going to be our simplified form for that expression. All right, so let's check, see which experts we have. So again, we're going to ask you to pause this video one more time and see if you can spot the mistake in the simplification of this expression. Right, so the answer of 12x is definitely wrong. And see if you can figure out why that is. And we'll check in a second. Okay, so if you break the expression up into all of the separate terms and then do your highlighting, you're going to see that you only can combine 4x plus x plus x, which is going to result in 6x. The 6, the positive 6 constant, cannot be combined. Right, and it looks like that's the mistake that this person made when they simplified. Right, they thought in our final answer here that we could combine the 6 and the 6x, which we cannot. All right, so our new topic for today is what happens if we have subtraction involved? So what if we have 7a plus 8b subtracted by everything in these parentheses? So really what that means, and it might help you to draw these arrows in. Remember, our parentheses are grouping symbols, right? So everything inside those parentheses counts as like one thing in math. And this negative or the subtraction sign needs to be applied to both things inside of that. So all that means is we're going to subtract 4a, but this subtraction sign also is applied to the 9b. So we're also going to subtract 9b from the problem. So I think it's helpful to write it underneath just like that. And then of course we're not changing anything with the 7a plus 8b yet, right? The only thing we're subtracting is the second set of parentheses. So now, if we go in, there's a sign, so I'm going to put a squiggly line before it. Same thing here, and same thing here. Whoops. I see that we have a terms, and we also have b terms. And all we have to do now is just combine those and get our simplified form. So if we look at 7a minus 4a, right, that's going to result in 3a. Oops, 3a. And then if we look at our blue terms, the b's, we have 8b minus 9b. So 8 minus 9 gives us a negative 1. So this is going to give us a minus 1b. And of course, we said yesterday, if it's a 1 in front, um, a 1 as the number in front of a variable, you can just get rid of it. So our final simplified form here for the expression is 3a minus b. Again, that final answer is exactly the same thing as what we started with, right? We didn't change the value of anything. We just changed the way it looks. We put it in a more simplified form. But if you were to plug in a number for A and B, both the original problem and your answer would still give you the same result. So, all right, so example two, let's get you started and 
maybe then we can have you pause the video and see if you can finish this one off. So again, this subtraction problem, subtraction sign, gets distributed or sent to everything inside the parentheses. So that happens in our first example, and then also in this second example over here. So let's see what that looks like. So 6x, we are going to subtract a 2x, and then we are going to subtract a negative 5, actually, right? Because the first one is the subtraction sign from the middle of the problem, and then this we're going to keep as a negative. And then, of course, you still have the 6x up front. And while we're at it, before we send you off to see if you can finish these, let's just do it for the second example as well. So minus a negative 2x, and then minus just a positive 5. So by doing that, we've sent that subtraction sign to everything inside those parentheses, so we would be good to go. And before we get you started, take a look. Remember from Unit 2 when we were practicing the rational number um, arithmetic? Look, you have 2, so, right, subtracting by a negative which we know just by keep change opposite, we can make that plus positive. If you see two subtraction signs in a row, switch them to two positives. Same thing over here. So that'll make your life a little bit easier. So why don't you pause the video one last time, see if you can finish those examples, and then we'll double check in a minute. All right, so let's tackle the first example um, together. So here we go. Um, again, I put our squiggly lines in and saw that we had x terms and a constant. So if we combine our x terms, so we're going to do 6x minus 2x, that is going to leave us with just a 4x. And then actually for our constant, there's nothing to combine with. It's just a plus 5. So our final answer, final simplified form of this expression is 4x plus 5. Those two terms can't be combined anymore, so we are done. All right, and then let's just finish off our second example here. So again, we'll start by combining our x terms. So we have 6x. Again, it was minus negative 2x. But if we do keep, change, opposite, we know that that's really just going to become 6x plus a positive 2x. Right? It's much easier, and then we can easily see that that's going to give us an 8x. And then same thing, no constant to um, combine, just the 1, so we're going to make it a minus 5. So our final simplified expression for this example is going to be 8x minus 5. So the point of this one was just for you to see, again, the problems we started with were very similar, but just a slight difference, right, where the subtraction and negative signs were really changed our answer. So anytime you see a subtraction symbol, so I'm going to get to pink, if you see a subtraction symbol and then uh, a quantity in parentheses, just make sure you're sending that subtraction sign to everything inside those parentheses. So again, hopefully this video helped. Um, thought we were ready to step it up a notch with some negatives today, um, and thank you for checking this out.